and welcome to Books Unbound, the podcast where we unbind books to get to their juicy hearts <laughs> with your hosts, us. It's Ariel and Raylene. What if I just said my name was Juicy? <laughs> <laughs> I almost said, I almost said with your hosts, Juicy Ariel and Juicy Raylene. And then I was like, that's the wrong we don't like way that. to start. <laughs> we don't like that. No. That's not what we stand for. Okay? But you are bringing Juicy back. I see that. I'm bringing Juicy back. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. I swear so, this isn't a nighttime episode. It has the nighttime energy already, but. It has the nighttime <laughs> energy. It does. We're feeling a little silly. <laughs> Whenever Aileen and I record at night, the episodes go a little unhinged. Yeah. Um, I think the reason is over exhaustion on yeah. my front. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It has been such a tiring week. Um, if if everyone on the camera just saw me squint for a second, I almost ran over my foot with my <gasps> wheels on my chair, but I didn't. I didn't. Um, yeah, it's been such a fun, fun week, but it's been so hectic mm. and full. As you recall, I had my friend staying with me, yeah. um, and she visited for a week, um, and it was so much fun, and I... <laughs> I really jam packed the hell out of that week. Like I was like, I want to show you everything. I really want everyone that comes to visit me to get like a really full representation of like what Nova Scotia is all about. And I'm like, that includes like small towns and rural areas like where I live. Mm -hmm. It involves the coast, but it also involves the city. And so I'm just like trying to show everything. And at the end of every night, we just like fall dead asleep. (laughs) It's like, it was like a, you know, like a field trip. Like I was hosting a field trip. Um, which I did when you were here as well. But now, yeah. really, I have a much better You've tour. been there much longer. Yeah. Yeah. I know so many, like, more spots to show and everything. But overall, it was such a fun trip. I loved her visit here. We had so many good chats. She's so clever. She's so mm. smart. Yeah. Her name is Kelly. Uh, Kelly, if you're listening to this, you're a genius. <laughs> and I loved talking with her. Like, It honestly did make me feel sad that she was leaving because I was like, we we had really good pub chats, which is like only something that I ever had in England when I was like living over there. And I would like go out with Lena, who we've had on the podcast before, and I'd go to a pub with her and we'd have pub chats and like rare. It made me, that always made me feel like, oh, this is just like special because I'm in England. But then Kelly was here and we'd go to the pub near our place where we stay in Halifax and we'd have these great conversations. And I was like, oh, I could have it here. So anyway, (laughs) I really try. I feel like I made my pitch pretty good to try and make Kelly move here. Um, it's not out of the question, which is awesome. Right. Maybe one day you'll get at least one person. To that's move. all I need. I just need one. I, uh, she's finishing her PhD program, oh right? And so after that, she has to get a job. And I'm like, there's jobs here. There's jobs here. I swear to God, there's jobs here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but actually, we went to a couple bookshops <gasps> together because obviously I had to show her some bookshops and, um, some purchases were made some purchases were made so there will be a book haul element to to this but the other thing i wanted to mention is if i hopefully it won't come off in the audio part but if in the video (laughs) part you're like ariel's not moving or she's like moving weirdly i threw out my back like two days ago yeah and i haven't been sleeping at all like because i'm just like can't get comfortable oh, no. like ev- i'm like it's been so painful it's honestly been really bad i i've cried twice about it <laughs> and thankfully last night i i slept better than the night before and but then i had to drive back home mm-hmm. and i told my mom and she was like let me get the heat pad <laughs> and she went and brought me her electric heat pad so i'm laying Ooh, i have yeah. it behind me and it's working it's working wonders yeah, those things are it's awesome. really nice so anyways if i'm acting weird or if you see me doing like what i just did like adjusting that's what it is. It's nothing <laughs> She's strange. Just adjusting. How about you, Raylene? How was your week slash weekend? Oh, uh, the week. I don't really remember the week, but the uh, yeah. weekend was uh, a weekend to remember because oh. um, we finally started painting stuff around the house. <gasps> no, we haven't painted the purple wall yet, but That's we so are funny. going to. So we started. Oh my God. We decided that we wanted to start just by fixing up the living room, like just focus on one room. 
instead of trying to like Definitely. paint the whole house and then move on to yes. something else because that's just crazy so we were like you know what let's yeah. just do the living room because it's the room that i want to hang out in the most but i don't currently want to hang out in uh, it because i don't like it in there okay. um so so everybody knows let me paint you a picture the living Please room do. is this small little room with a fireplace and yep. a like pinky purple wall which okay. some people like pretty much everybody that has come to our house is like wow i love that wall but kyle and i don't <laughs> like the wall so the wall is gonna maybe go. they just maybe they just like that it's colorful exactly i think it's like the novelty a green of one it. even more nobody nobody yeah. else has a pink wall in their house so <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of yeah. cool but um, exactly so we decided that we wanted to start with painting the fireplace um so that we could mm. kind of gauge how dark of a green we want to go with based off of that so the fireplace was like an ugly white kind of, but painted so terribly that like you can see through the cracks and there's Yikes. like weird colors. It just looked dirty and like yeah. not nice. And so yeah. on Friday night, we sanded the mantle. Also, when oh, we first cool. moved in, the mantle had crown molding like glued onto it, which was nice. so strange. So we ripped that off a few awesome. months ago. And then yeah, nice. on the Friday night, we sanded the, that puppy down. And then Whoa. on Saturday, we put down primer over the whole thing. And then yesterday we painted over it. And so it's what been- What color did you paint it? Sorry, I missed it. Oh, I did not tell you. So we painted the, like the mantle and the tile is like black, which actually oh. when we opened up the paint, it was a very, very dark blue. We thought it was black, oh. but it's actually just really, really dark blue. But anyway, it looks okay. like black. And then okay. we did like a dark gray for the stones. That's that like a stone so fireplace. Cool. So it does yeah. look really cool because it just looked like grungy and weird white. And now it looks kind of like sexy stone. Like it looks, yes. it looks a little bit more like natural almost. Well, also mm. not being because it is painted. But yeah, I think it looks way better now. And awesome. I'm really excited to paint the walls. So that was my weekend. <laughs> Lots of painting. So my arms are kind of sore because yes. painting a fireplace is a lot more work than you think it's going to be because there's so, so many textured. crevices. Oh my yeah, goodness. Wow. So there was a lot of painting like this. Yeah. You know, dabbing. dabbing. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so my, my arms are really sore now. Oh. It's like I did a workout, but I just painted a lot. Yeah. But it was fun. That's so exciting. <clears throat> I'm though. so, like, I'm really excited. Like I, all week long, I was like, I can't wait to get the paint. I can't wait to paint the fireplace. Like I was so excited. Yeah. That's all I could think about. And now I'm just like ready, ready to paint the wall. And painting a wall is going to be so easy in comparison. In comparison, it's going to feel stupid. It's going to You're going to be, gonna be awesome. like, wow, this is child's play. Yeah, anyone could a do this. A child could paint this wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was a lot of fun. I genuinely love painting stuff. Like I just find it mm. to be so fun, even though it's a lot of work. I love it. Yeah. I love it. That's so sick. That's so sick. I'm so excited to see the photos. Please send me photos. You Will know do. I love that stuff. Yep. Let's talk about reading, I guess. Books, I can books, feel myself books. hunching uh -oh. because I'm like, uh, season. I'm season up. <laughs> you should have just laid down on a couch for this recording. Yep. I should have just been <laughs> uh, horizontal. Supine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really? And I'm pretty hyped on my book haul. I think I want to start there. I think you there. should start. Go for it. I'm really curious to see what you got, as always. I got such a cool stack of books. Okay. Um... So let's start with this one. And I I saw this in the shop. I wish that there was like a recording of me. <laughs> I'm not encouraging anyone. I'm not encouraging anyone to record me in public. But <laughs> I was just like, I, I wish that somebody could have seen like recorded it. Because yeah. I like pulled this down from the shelf. I just kind of stared at it confusedly for like a long time. Yeah. I think I was, again, I was just really tired by this point. I was really staring at it. I was like, I don't know this book. Do I know this book? Oh. I was like, does Raylene own this one? I don't remember. Oh my gosh. But it's so if you own this, uh I don't remember you owning it. But do you own or have you heard of Mild Vertigo by Miyako Kanai? No. Okay, great. I don't think cool. I've ever I... heard of it or seen it anywhere. Okay, me neither. I okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Because I was like, why? Am... I think I was confused because um, it's by Miyako, which obviously yeah. the there's the Cal popular Cal. author that has that same first name. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where the confusion was. But this is so exciting, really. Yeah. For a couple of reasons. Number one, it sounds awesome. Uh, <laughs> that's obviously the most important thing. Like the book sounds really cool. Well, 
You know what? I think it's going to sound really boring to most people. Cause it's, <laughs> is it, it about a woman doing nothing? <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes, that. it is! It's literally just, it says, the apparently unremarkable Natsumi lives in modern to- in a modern Tokyo apartment with her husband and two sons. She does the laundry, goes to the supermarket, and gossips with neighbors. As Natsumi's conversations with her family and friends blend seamlessly into her infernally buzzing internal monologue, the book unmasks the lonely, dizzying reality of being unable to locate oneself in the endless stream of minutiae that forms a home where both everything and nothing happens. I so, love it. <laughs> I know, me too. I was like, this sounds perfect. <laughs> exactly what we want. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting, it says, with shades of Clarice Lispector, oh. Elena Ferrante, and Kobo Abis. I was like, what an interesting yeah. choice of th- authors that they're bringing together. Yeah. Um, But it's also blurbed by Hiroko Oyamada. Oh. Oh. Hirko Yamada says the it. this her writing represents one of the high points of Japanese literature, the tiny details giving shape to the everyday. Uh their utter ordinariness. <laughs> <laughs> I can really see this being boring as hell. Oh, right? Um but in a way that will work for me. Yeah. Um the other thing I really was excited about is just I like the cover a lot. I think it's really cool. Yeah. Um, and then the third thing is, then this is the other big thing, is that it's published by New Direction. Of course. This, I know you're going to say it. <laughs> yes. My new favorite publisher, awesome. New Directions. Um, so I'm guessing that this came out recently if neither you nor I have heard of it because yeah, it must be. we are big fans of the old uh, Japanese translated. Yep. yep. Okay. Here. This is fascinating. 2002. Nope. First Japanese edition published as, I can't pronounce that, in 1997. Oh. But then the copyright for the English version, it says 2002, but then this version is 2023. Oh, wow. So it just got a new translation. Very cool. uh, By Polly Barton. Who I also we know like Polly. We know that yeah, show. Polly know translated. Polly? There's no such thing as an easy job. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure. <laughs> so that's gonna have a nice British flair if that's the, what yes. I'm remembering correctly. <laughs> I totally agree. Okay, cool. So the ne- that was at Bookmark in Halifax mm. when I love showed that Kelly store. Bookmark. They have such a good curated selection. I yes. think we were talking about that recently. Like some stores just like have it. And some don't, or maybe that was another friend. I can't remember, but some bookstores got it, or you don't got it. <laughs> some bookstores, it's true. Just like have a really good selection because the people who take care of the ordering or whatever just like have good taste and like know what yes. people want that are like a yes. little bit different than usual. I feel like Massey Books in Vancouver is like that too. They have mm-hmm. such a good selection. Anyway. I totally agree. Yeah. I think we were talking about it because either in last week or the week before that episode, I talked about going to the new bookshop well new to me bookshop in right. Anaganish. Yes, yes yes and i was like this was well curated mm-hmm. so speaking of which i went to another new bookshop Yay! Well, that's awesome in my mission this year to remind everyone <laughs> this year i am attempting to visit every bookshop in nova scotia there are to to the best of my knowledge 36 and this yeah. is my sixth or seven mm-hmm. i've lost count but i i'm updating the website so if you want to see photos of every bookshop and then just a little blurb from me that's like mm-hmm. this is what i thought of it uh that's on our website linked in the description and in the show notes um but the one that i went to is one that i was not avoiding that's not right <laughs> at all but i was just like a little like ah this is not my comfort zone okay um it's called Venus Envy, and it is a bookshop plus sex shop, oh. which is a classic combo. You know, I don't know why that's a classic combo, but I see them all the time. Oh, really? Where it's like a lot of pride and queer books yeah. and like a lot of like sex positive books. And so it'll be a big bookshop. And then in the back, it's also a sex shop with like sex toys and stuff. That's so and interesting. Like, I feel I like I've never seen a store like that, but that does make sense. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a very sex positive space and like really celebrating all of that stuff. And and it's, um, I've seen some in Toronto. I've definitely seen some in New York and London. I was going to say big cities probably, not where I live. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I live in a very conservative Uh, place. (laughs) (laughs) Unfortunately. For me, I, I, 
I always feel awkward when I'm in a sex shop. I am not, I'm clearly not liberated enough. <laughs> you just need to go more enough. often. I Yeah, that's it really. And that's it. I, I'm like, I always feel like, oh God, okay, it's fine. I'm an adult. I'm allowed yeah, in I'm here. Just I'm an adult. I'm allowed in here. I'm, but like internally, I'm like freaking out. Um... And at one point, so I went in with Kelly and Kelly was like, are you feeling good? I was like, oh, I'm, oh, I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> feeling awesome. But here's what I will say. It was an amazing bookshop. Oh, yay. I actually will take all of my friends that are comfortable going to a shop like that. I will take them mm-hmm. to the shop because first of all, it's more bookshop than it is sex shop. Yeah. Like it's. Okay. It was like, you know, you never know the balance of those of those types of mm-hmm. shops where it's like, what is it just like a sex shop with a bookshelf or is it like <laughs> yeah. a bookshop with a back section or whatever? It was definitely the latter. The staff was so, so friendly, which is always my experience in shops like this. Yeah. Um, and especially in like LGBT plus um, bookshops, mm-hmm. I find the staff to be so friendly and like really helpful. Yeah. And so they came up and they were like, would you, do you need any help finding anything? And I was like, actually, yes, because my friend Kelly, Mm. as I mentioned, is doing her PhD. She is studying ghosts. Oh my gosh. uh, To to really. I can see why you're friends. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, you're right. Uh, To really um, essentialize her work, because obviously it's much more complicated than that. But sex and performance and ecology, it's a beautiful, interesting project. Um, But yeah, she has started this like a uh, game where any bookshop we go into and or her and her normal life but me during this week yeah. every bookshop we went into she tried to find all of the books that have ghost or haunted oh. in the title oh interesting and she would take pictures of all of them and post them on her instagram stories and so it was super fun to be like because i've never had a I'm mission hunt. like that where i'm like <laughs> yeah. oh, really or i'd be like yeah i'd be like kelly i found one and she'd run <laughs> over and she'd take a photo and then i'd be and i'd hear her be like oh, look at this one and it was like it felt like winning even though we weren't yeah, winning anything. Weird treasure hunt. But I mentioned it to the to the people working in the shop and they were like, Ooh, oh, oh this one, this one. <laughs> they were like really invested yeah. in the mission with us. So they were so friendly. And I felt like it was really, really well curated. Like the shop nice. had a lot of great stuff. Um, a lot of the kind of intersectional different areas, like a lot of indigenous stuff and black voices had a, a shelf and uh, also a lot of nonfiction on like learning about a lot of different stuff. There was a whole menstruation section. So wow. it was like, yeah, it was very, very cool. The book I ended up picking up there was Giovanni's Room. Oh, very good. Right? By James I love Baldwin. That for you. Yeah, that's a good book. I love this for me too. This is like one of these like bucket list books where I'm like, how have I not gotten to this yeah. yet? This is um one of those books that very genuinely I've never heard anyone not like it. It's just so good. <laughs> it seems like everyone likes it. They also had what is the other one? Beale Street? The If Beale Street, Street could talk. That one. Uh have you read that one? No, I started reading that okay. one and wasn't really that into it unfortunately okay great because i said to kelly i was like which one of these should i buy she's like giovanni's room i was like okay cool and i couldn't remember which one you'd read Mm -hmm. i feel like you've read another one of his as well i may have i don't know anyways (laughs) i was like i remember raylene really liked one but i don't remember which one it was and so okay that's good news that it was that's the one giovanni's room um i haven't read it so you obviously know better than me i almost feel dumb reading this out loud but it's on the back it says set in the 1950s paris of american expatriates liaisons and violence a young man finds himself caught between desire and conventional morality um oh michael Ondaatje, canadian mm. author says if van gogh whoa this is gonna be crazy <laughs> <laughs> here we go what are you saying michael <laughs> if van gogh was our 19th century artist saint James Baldwin is our 20th century one. Wow. Uh, I think Michael's lost it a little bit. Because I'm like, <laughs> how can you compare a visual art to writing? That's okay. A little crazy, <laughs> but I get what he's saying. And he's I get what wrong. he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this felt like a really a good one to pick up, especially also because, uh, again, it's Pride Month, obviously. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'd love to pick up an LGBT book in the very sex positive shop. Yeah, that so, worked out great. I really give my stamp of approval to Venus Books. Sorry, Venus Envy. Great bookshop. I will also say, um, 
I took photos in there, but they're not as good as my usual photos because I was like very aware mm. that I didn't want to photograph anyone in a sex shop. Yeah. Like I was like, I'm crossing a boundary. <laughs> so I would just do like little photos of like a bookshelf yeah. so that you could, you can get a flavor of it, but the photos, there's not as many and they're not as good. I'm just saying, <laughs> putting that out. That makes putting sense. That out there. Um, okay. The next one, this is, again, this is like every, worlds colliding. I got Pod <gasps> by nice. Laleen Paul. Look how cool the cover it is. It is such a good cover. Yeah. It's really cool. So Kelly read this. Yes. Loved it. Okay. And, but she read it because she also watches Lena. Oh my goodness. Our pal. And Fuck Lena loved around. it. Yeah. So Kelly read it because of Lena. And then Kelly couldn't fit it in her suitcase because we bought so many books. Well, she bought so many books. And she was like, honestly, I'm happy. I would love to give this book to you as like a little thanks for a great trip. And uh, just like, here you go. And I was like, great. So she gifted me this (laughs) book. That worked out perfect. Yeah, it worked out really well. Um, And it's kind of funny how... I've talked about this book on the pod because of Lena and on the pod. <laughs> just have heard of it. Oh, <laughs> on the pod. I see what you did wow. there. Um, but yeah, it sounds really, I mean, it sounds really crazy if I'm honest. It does. It's just about a bunch of dolphins, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it takes, pl- so it says proud and sensitive Ia, a spinner dolphin has always felt like an outsider. <laughs> oh no. I love it. Her partial deafness has stopped her from mastering the art of movement that unites her pod. Oh. But now that she has come of age, she must join in. Uh, desperate to excel, Ia causes tragedy <gasps> and in her shame, exiles herself into the vast ocean beyond her home waters. Oh my god. What? Kind of sounds like <laughs> the Lion King or something. <laughs> it kind of does, doesn't I it? Love I that. have heard. I have heard that it's very sad and very intense so i'll just mention that um i think there was some sexual assault stuff look at this amazing author photo um she's where the author in the author photo (gasps) is wearing those that bracelet do you see the bracelet it's like the kind of bracelet that surfers wear makes a lot of sense (laughs) she loves the ocean (laughs) that's a cool looking lady she's very Um, cool Okay, and then the final two books I want to haul were sent to me by our buddy, um, Cam. You know Cam? I'm oh, sorry, I'm reaching over to grab the books. <laughs> Cam, who has sent us a few books in our day, mm. um, very excitingly sent me two books. One of which I asked for, one of which I did not. And usually <laughs> I'm super against publishers sending me books I didn't ask yeah. for, but... This is a friend of mine who I've known for years, and he was like, "You need to have it." And the book, that book, is "A New Season" <gasps> by Terry Fallis. Oh my gosh! <laughs> How exciting! So this is very exciting, obviously. Yeah, I'm obviously a big fan of the old albatross. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna read you the note that Cam sent me. Also, Cam has very cool handwriting ariel i know how much you loved albatross and i hope you'll enjoy his newest book which comes out this august from our friends at ms mcclellan and stewart mcclellan and stewart so i'm reading the back of this and i'm like oh my (laughs) god so it's about a guy jack mccaster which i'm like ah perfect (laughs) seems to have it all beautiful house a loving son of many talents and even a special bond with his ball hockey buddies but he's also learning to live with loss and the gaping hole it leaves in his life jack passes his days knowing he has the support of his family and friends but still he can't shake the feeling that his days have gone gray and that time is slipping by so quickly then a shocking video from an unexpected source Uh gives him the gumption to haul himself out of his melancholia. Inspired by his fascination with 1920s Paris, (laughs) Jack finally visits the City of Light, following in the footsteps of Hemingway and Fitzgerald. Uh, Slowly, the color seeps back into his life, aided by a chance encounter in a cafe that leads Jack into the art world and a Paris mystery nearly a century old. Whoa. Uh, is this Midnight in right? Paris That's meets what Albatross? It sounds exactly like that. <laughs> yeah. Promising. Very promising. That's pretty interesting stuff. So I was excited to get that. Oh, my back. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then uh, the other one, Raylene, 
I almost feel bad showing you this. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> Roman. <gasps> by Mariko <laughs> and Jillian Tamaki. You should feel bad. This, <laughs> <laughs> this is by far my most anticipated graphic novel of the year. Yeah. Wait. Well, maybe tied with Miss Brenna Thumbler's uh-huh. lights. Very excited about that, actually. But Jillian and Mariko Tamaki as a team is like the dream team yeah, of graphic be. novels. They, I feel like they were for a while releasing quite a few. Yeah. But then they really have stopped for a long time. And so this is very exciting because this is mm-hmm. like, I feel like I've been waiting ages for this. Yeah, it looks Like big. a new book by them. Yeah, it's huge. It's a chunk. Look how cool <gasps> the spine is. Oh, I want that. It's got the pizza spine on it. Is, wow. Yeah, the spine is awesome. The book feels really good in yeah, the hands. Yeah. The color scheme is very cool. Oh, they're so good at that. They're so the simple color scheme, but it's just so effective. Oh, uh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> we love graphic novels. Okay. <laughs> it's, I know. It says, Spring Break 2009. Five days. Three friends at one big city. On their first March break as college students, old friends Danny and Zoe plan to reunite in a place they've always they've wanted to visit forever, New York City. Emotional tensions, new and old, vibrate against the re- resplendently illustrated backdrop of the city. Um, yeah, and it says, Roaming marks a triumphant return to the graphic novel and deft foray into new adult fiction for mm. Jillian and Mariko Tamaki. Um, I'm skipping a lot of the stuff there, but it's really exciting because as far as I'm aware, uh, unless I'm... Th- no, I'm pretty sure every book that they've written together has been for y- the o- for a YA yeah. audience. Yeah, I think you're right. And I loved them when I was in the YA audience, and I still can read them and be like, this is fantastic. Yeah. But it's obviously, it hits different when you're reading a book that's more contemporary to you. And so the characters being in their 20s, I think, just sounds so exciting. Yeah. Um, so I was so, when I opened, when I felt it in the mail, I was like, wait, this one's thick She's big. and heavy. <laughs> I feel like this could be it. And when I opened it, I was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a really exciting thing to receive. Right? Yeah. That's awesome. So... That's my big old stack. Um, stack. Isn't that a cool stack, really? Yeah, it's like like... very random, but in the best way. It is pretty random. Like, I feel like it's random, but it's all books that you really want, you know? Yeah, this is a cool, weird pile. It is a stack. Um, But I feel like, I feel like I really didn't go overboard. Like, the only two books I bought out of the stack were, I bought one book at each shop that we visited. Yeah. I bought mild vertigo in the one shop giovanni's room in the other shop i was gifted a book and then i was sent the two books perfect um so i didn't feel like i went overboard but i still got a bunch of really cool things yeah which is awesome that worked out well um did you get any books this week no i Ooh. didn't i've been cool. controlling myself just this one time <laughs> <laughs> i've i've yeah had a lot of book hauls throughout the past few weeks so it's true luckily i've controlled myself i don't have <clears> any <throat> new books to haul that's okay. That's yeah, definitely probably good. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I have to agree with well, you. Well, if you haven't hauled, have you read? What is, yes. What's the reading update? Yes. So I know. have finished two books since cool. we uh, talked last week. Um, the first one being Page Boy by Elliot Page. Elliot Page was born in Halifax, Nova Scotia in 1987 and began his acting career at the age of 10. He has starred in dozens of films and was even nominated for an Oscar for his role in Juno. In 2019, he wrote and directed a documentary called There's Something in the Water, which is about environmental racism in Nova Scotia. So first of all, I'm really excited that I got to this book so quickly after it came out. That was a big thing for me, which was really cool. And um, I will say, I liked the book. I didn't love the book. Um, So, and that has nothing to do with Elliot's story, obviously. Like, it's so hard to kind of review memoirs because it sounds like yeah. we're reviewing their story but that's not it at all so yes. here's kind of my journey with this book it's pretty short it's 270 okay. pages i think but i feel like it was trying to cover way too many topics in that short of a amount of time and so i feel like a lot of subjects didn't really get delved to like deeply or as deeply as yeah. they could have been because there were a lot of like heavy topics but then also just like talking about being an actor and what Mm -hmm. that's like and you know there's like an eating disorder 
moment and like there's lots of heavy things that happen and i feel Mm. like he just didn't like talk about them and like reflect on them i guess as much as i would have liked in a memoir um i find memoirs are most effective when they're you know about one specific say moment in a person's life and they're just reflecting on that and like showing how they've grown because of it or whatever and i just feel like this book was too all over the place Mm. and so like i liked it like i definitely don't think it's a bad book but it just wasn't what I wanted it to be, I guess, which mm. kind of sucks a little bit. I've been seeing lots of mixed reviews for this book. Like some people oh, really, really love it. Some people hate it. And then some people are are like me, like right in the middle. So it is okay. kind of, it just depends on your tastes, I guess. And I've, I've read quite a few really good memoirs recently, which I think could have been to the detriment of this book. Like I feel like I, totally. you know, I just read Know My Name like a month ago and it was the best memoir I've ever read. And it's going to be really hard to live up to that. Um, so what? I did try to read this with like, you know, giving it some slack. But even so, I just feel like it should have maybe been longer if if you wanted to like mm. dive into so many, so many topics. But anyway, so I, I, I felt kind of neutral about that one. But yeah, but that's interesting. I mean, I am glad read. that you read it. Yeah, though. exactly. Like, no, yeah. I'm glad I read it. And it was nice to like learn more about Elliot Page. Like there was a lot about his childhood and like, you know journey through the industry that i didn't realize was happening and it makes me like feel so much sympathy for him through like all the Mm. stuff that he went through so learning more about him was really was really good um you mentioned last week that it's like not linear like it does it it jumps back that was another kind of problem that i had with it like it would be so confusing all of a sudden like you'd be talking about things that are happening like that happened in the past few years then all of a sudden he's like and now i'm nine and let me tell you about this thing that happened and i feel like that was part of the problem too is it just jumped around so much and Mm -hmm. it was hard to follow the story i wish it would have just focused on certain time periods and kind of moved you through from past to present but it didn't really do that which was kind of kind of crazy kind of okay yeah i feel like listening to this on audiobook would be extra confusing so i wonder Mm, i wonder how people feel about that yeah Um, but yeah so just like a very middle of the road memoir i would definitely recommend it if you want to read you know if you want to read it go for it but that's just my take and then cool after i finished that i read another new favorite so so it all worked out so after i finished reading page boy i decided to pick up Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain. Anthony Bourdain was a celebrity chef, author, and travel documentarian who, after graduating from the Culinary Institute of America, spent many years working in various professional kitchens in New York. His best-selling memoir, Kitchen Confidential, launched his career as a celebrity chef, and in it he reveals the unglamorous truths about being a professional chef. So, I'm so glad that I decided to pick up this book <laughs> when I did yeah. because it was just like the rejuvenation that I felt like I needed. I feel like yes. I could have fallen into a slump of just like, I don't know what to do now after reading that sort of middling book. Yeah. And then I picked up Co- Kitchen Confidential. It actually happened because the audiobook became available for me at the library, like the day I finished mm. Page Boy. And so I just said, you know what? I'm going to listen to this book. And I'm Amazing. so glad I did. First of all, the audiobook is incredible. It's read by Anthony Bourdain. And he is just so, like, I really like him. And it's funny because mm. I I never, like, watched any of the shows he did or I haven't read any of his other books. So I actually don't really know him that well. Like, I don't know his okay. personality or anything. And so going yeah. into this book completely blind was really fun because of that. Because okay. he's just, like, really straightforward, really blunt kind of an asshole but he knows that he's an asshole and like I just love the way the book was written and um but yeah for those who don't know this is a kind of like partly a memoir and partly him just like unveiling the dark truths about like Mm. professional kitchens and like things Mm -hmm. that happen in restaurants that people might not want to hear about so it's kind of like a a little bit of a scary read if you like go to restaurants a lot because it'll teach you some things you might not (laughs) might not like Uh but he also gives lots of good tips on like you know, these are things that you could, should look for in a restaurant you're going to. Like these are, mm. you know, red flags and these are green flags. And if you want to become have, a chef, these are the things that you do, can do. And it was really interesting. Do you have an example of like one thing that kind of stuck with you? Oh, well, one um, thing he said, apparently, yeah. I don't know if this is still true or if it's true in every restaurant, but a lot of yeah. restaurants apparently will like reuse bread. Like if somebody sends back an entire basket of bread untouched, Ooh. they'll just give it to another table. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, scary. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of stuck with me. Another thing he says is that um, 
you should never order fish on Mondays because apparently like, oh. you know, they would get a big fish order on Fridays for the weekend. And on Mondays, you're just getting whatever scraps are left over and they're just oh. trying to get rid of it. So that was interesting as well. So he has like, lots of little tidbits of just like, ooh, <laughs> that is something I never would have thought of. But now I know. Um, but yeah, so he kind of recounts all the different restaurants he's worked in and like the people he met there and what the environment of working in a professional kitchen is like. And yeah. like it really, it's eye opening for people who think being a mm. chef is just like, oh, it's just this easy thing. You just you just cook or whatever. It's like right. one of the hardest lifestyles Oof. you can have is being a professional yeah. chef. Like my God, I, I really am fascinated by that kind of stuff. I know that I would never want to work in a kitchen because that is just mm. not, it's too stressful, too stressful and too scary. But I love reading about it and like watching shows about it. I find it so interesting. But yeah, yeah so I loved this book, like love, love, loved it. And now I'm like, why, so awesome. why do I not only read memoirs? I'm starting to think that That's so <laughs> I might funny. be having a revolution here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, How, super good. Um, Sorry, when did that book come out? It came out How in 2000. Okay, okay, so... Yeah, it came out 23 years ago, so... Interesting. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah, and now I'm like, I need to read all of his books, and I need to go back and, like, watch all of his shows, which would probably take a long time, but I'm just like... Yeah. I want to... Tell me more about Anthony. I want to I see... <laughs> I want to see his stuff, because I really, I really liked his personality that came through in the audiobook. <laughs> I forget... Have, have you seen The Bear? Yes. That's okay. another show I love. I, I want more stuff like that. If anybody yes. can recommend me books or shows or movies that are set in kitchens, I would yeah. love that. And I've already seen the movie Chef and I've already seen the movie Burnt. So And the menu. And the menu. That's true. That's a slightly different vibe, but Yeah, it yeah. is a different vibe. But yeah, I really I really vibe. love that stuff. Yeah, I kinda wanna watch the bear again, honestly, after reading this book. It it felt like it had a similar vibe to that. Because he's just got, like, yeah. a kitchen full of kind of, like, scrappy folks who, like, become family. Like, oh, that's what it's like probably in most kitchens. So, yeah. Have you seen that rom-com that's set in a kitchen? What is it called? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what it's called. And it's got the guy who uh, is Two-Face in... Batman. I think I know who you're talking about, but I don't know what movie this is. Do you know what I'm talking about? Not at okay, all. Let me, let, me, let me think. The Dark Knight, we're going to go on this rabbit hole together. The Dark Knight, that's the movie he's in. He plays mm -hmm. Two-Face in that, so I'm looking that up on IMDb. Okay, the actor's name is Aaron Eckhart. Oh, right. I knew I would recognize it when I heard it. And I feel like um, I keep seeing, like, it keeps trying to show, like, Netflix or something keeps trying to show me this rom-com. Oh, <laughs> Oh my god, I found it. I found it. It's from 2007. Uh-huh. It's called No Reservations. <laughs> and it's Aaron Eckhart and Catherine Zeta-Jones. Oh. And it says, the life of a top chef changes when she becomes the guardian of her young niece. Oh. Okay, so maybe the movie is actually more about her than it is about him. I but in the so. posters I've been seeing, it's him in it. Okay. Um, okay, so you're telling me you haven't seen that. I have not. Maybe that'll be the next movie we watch together. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Abigail Bresling is in it. Oh, is she's she the, the niece? Da she's the yeah, she's the niece. Interesting. Classic. It's set in New York. I mean, come on. Yeah, New York <laughs> setting is also incredible. pretty awesome for this. That's pretty optimal, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um. Okay, so that worked out really well. What are you reading now that those guys are over? Well, I don't know. I have to figure oh. out what I'm going to read next. <laughs> I, oh, my God. So I finished okay. Kitchen Confidential on, I think, Friday night. And then I just spent the whole weekend painting and, like, watching movies. Oh, I, I was kind of burnt out, so I didn't yeah. start anything. So okay. I don't know what to read next. I might need some help. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, in this exact moment, you want me to pick? No. Or you're like, you're God, text no. Me <laughs> I'll text you later. I am not prepared I for that. I'm like, oh my god, here we go. Uh, uh. Okay, great. No, we're both freaking out. Um, all right, well, my reading update is pretty low, pretty thin on the ground, <laughs> as they say in the industry. I am still reading A Single Man, and I'm still loving it. This book is fantastic. I'm, like, obsessed. I'm hoping that it ends well. Mm. The second half is really good, because if so, this is going to be, like, a top read of oh, the awesome. year. I've um also been reading some secret books of yeah. which i cannot say 
because they're in preparation for our special episode 200, which is next week's yes, episode. Yes, it is. Oh my goodness. Which is crazy to think about that, <laughs> like, next week we'll be we'll be recording our 200th episode of that the show. That is pretty crazy. just wild. I hadn't that's really wild. let that sink in. Like, it, to me, it was just a number yeah. in my head before. And now I'm like, wait. No. That's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot of episodes of this thing. It's a lot um, of hours we've spent I'll- talking to each other. <laughs> Isn't that so beautiful to think about? It is. Hmm. That is beautiful. I was talking to my friend that, that was staying, Kelly. I was like, because we were talking about the podcast. Yeah. And she was like, like, what's that like? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, honestly, it's one of my most genius moves <laughs> because it means I talk to Raylene every week. We have yeah. to talk. Got it. And so like so many internet friendships have like seasons where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, I talk to this person a lot, but then we kind of drift out of touch yeah. and then we drift back into touch. Not with Raylene. It's every week. <laughs> I'm always there. <laughs> it's always there, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, we're really excited for episode 200 and we've like prepped a couple of fun, cute things to make it a little special, Mm -hmm. but some of that includes secret reading. And because of that secret reading on top of my friend visiting, I just haven't finished anything. Yeah. Um, Understandable. That was me a few weeks ago. I did my secret reading a couple of weeks ago. So if you remember, there may have been a time where I seemingly read nothing, but yes i actually see, read we multiple books that well, actually. <laughs> yeah that's true it's kind of good that we staggered it so, so now unless, i'm reading like unless, crazy <laughs> yeah and it's not like two weeks of both of us being like um <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm reading something but i can't tell you what it is can't tell you a goddamn thing yeah that'll um, be fun okay so let's jump in therefore to book games mm. so this week i i don't know i was just like I had an epiphany when I was showering the other day. I was listening to music and I was like, why don't we talk about music more? I love music. Music is great. I just like got really excited about music. And so I was like, Ariel, the next book game, what we're going to do is we're going to match up books and songs. And this can mean whatever you want it to mean. It can be a song that you just feel like has the same vibe as a book, or it can be based on a memory. You know, it can be anything Mm. you want it to be. So I I told Ariel to please pick three pairings and I've also done the same and then we'll just kind of chat about them. I'm hoping that CJ can insert little clips of the music Probably not very much because of copyright, yeah. but we might be able to squeeze in a couple a seconds spurt. of each song. That would be awesome. Because yeah, that would really um, help get the vibes across. Exactly. Yeah. So let me... Shall I start right? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so I drove back home today and I was listening to the CBC, which I do a lot. <laughs> and I was listening to the CBC and they were talking about... Uh, the CBC is such a hit or miss. It's <laughs> such a hit or miss. Like sometimes I literally slam the button off. I'm oh like, I'm gosh. not listening to that. That's such a bad, like, what is this? Uh, like, this is such bad radio. But then sometimes I'm like, oh, this is a beautiful story. I mean, it's the thing of like, they have 24 hours of radio. Oh, of course, yeah. so much of it is going to be bad. Like they're just There's filling only so air. much content. <laughs> yeah. My favorite par- part of the radio is like, the just at the top of the hour they just do the news mm. so that's why i always will check in on and then you some and then i'll start to listen to the next program yeah. and i'm like god no <laughs> uh but anyways this time they had a really great piece okay. on it was awesome they were interviewing an author of this book um mm. that just came out and i totally forget what the book is um history of emo <laughs> oh <laughs> Okay. <laughs> of music and it was a book and that's like coming out right now in this time um and i don't remember what it's called which i feel bad about because it's honestly sounded so good and the mm. guy sounded really really fun um it was like the oral history of emo or something oh he goodness. kept saying the oral history i was like why do you keep saying oral history <laughs> It's just weird, I guess. Oh, oh, I found it. Yes. Okay, fantastic. It's called it was called Where Are Your Boys Tonight mm. by Chris Payne. Okay. Oh, that's an emo name too, eh? Chris Payne. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, I love it. Um, okay, so I was listening to this and I listened to it for to like 20 for 20 minutes or something. Yeah. And I was like, this is fantastic radio. I'm loving this. The guy was really funny and interesting and kind of wasn't an academic he was sort of just like a, a guy that loves emo music but yeah. he used to write for billboard and everything okay 
Anyhow, moral of the story is I was like, he hyped it up so much that I was like, I gotta listen to some emo. Yeah. So okay. I gotta, I just typed in emo into Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. And I just listened to some random Spotify mm-hmm. playlist, right? And I'm just like, listen to the tracks and it's got all the classics on there. Yeah. And I feel like, I will say there was a distinct lack of Canadian emo oh. on the playlist I was listening yeah. to. Like, it didn't have Billy Talent on it. It what? didn't have Three Days Grace on it. Excuse and, me. <laughs> exactly. And I was like, where? I kept expecting them to come on. And they, I listened to, like, a lot of songs because I would, like, listen to some of it and then skip to the next yeah. one. I listened to a lot of songs, and this playlist didn't have any. And so then I, I switched to a different playlist. Yeah. It also didn't have those two big bands. You and just I was like, put on Billy Talent Radio. I know, that exactly. Been the move. So then I... What I realized was that, I realize this all of the time, actually, <laughs> that Canadian music is not as big as I think it is. Yeah, true. I'm like, Three Days Grace and Billy Talent, there is no Canadian who hasn't heard of those bands. Yeah. Especially, like, people our age. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, yeah, anyway. Anyway, that's an aside. That's an aside. I'm like, please, tell. I'm so curious how this connects <laughs> to my game. <laughs> You're going to recommend me a um, bunch of emo books now? <laughs> I'll just uh, get, hold on. I need to put my eyeliner on thicker. <laughs> I'm listening to the second playlist, and uh, an early Twenty One Pilots song comes. Oh, out. nice! And I'm like, oh yes, <laughs> the music of my youth. I do and love so them. I was like, honestly, I'm just gonna listen to that album. So I'm just listening to the the one with the two old men on it. I'm so Vessel. bad at album names. Yeah, Vessel. That's okay. Perfect. Thank you. I was listening to Vessel. And House of Gold comes on. Oh. And I'm listening <laughs> to this song. song. I know, right? I know. I'm listening to this song, and it makes me think of The Grapes of Wrath. Oh. Okay? Okay. So this is my first book and song combo. Okay. Uh, I had the lyrics here, and now they're gone of cold. Uh, House of Gold. Okay. So it's sort of a little story, I guess, a little bit. It mm-hmm. says, she asked me, son, when I grow old, <laughs> it's going to be really hard not to start doing the melody. I know, right? <laughs> uh, when I grow old, will you buy me a house of gold? And when your father turns to stone, will you take care of me? And he responds, I will make you queen of everything you see. I'll put you on the map. I'll cure you of disease. It's so funny not singing it. I know. And so <laughs> feels wrong. I... It does feel wrong. And so I uh, was thinking it really, to me, feels like the story of, like, being working class and, like, Mm. having these big dreams of, like, things are rough and it's, like, not a good family life or it's, like, a poverty thing and you're, like, thinking of of where you wish you were. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I wish we didn't have to worry about disease. I wish we could have fancy houses. And then that made me think of The Grapes of Wrath, a book I haven't read. Yeah. So... (laughs) I was like, I don't know why I'm choosing this, but once I got it in my head, I couldn't get it out of I my I feel head. that. Um, and this is, I mean, I don't, I know it is that. It's a family during the Great Depression driven from their farm um, and like having to travel across the country to try and find a new life, mm-hmm. right? So it's like poverty and stuff. Fa- family and poverty. Those yeah. are the two things, vibes that I was feeling. Um, and then right now, like an hour or whatever ago when I was getting ready, I was like looking for the lyrics again and I got on the YouTube video oh, version of it. Okay. And the music video, Raylene, is shot on a rural farm. What? Like a he downtrodden farm. And I was like, um, <laughs> I think I nailed that. I think so. Okay. Anyway, I really told a long story. No, for I, love, that, I but... love how deeply you like <laughs> thought about all of that. My That's journey. really fun. I went on a journey. And before I jump into mine, I just want to say that I've also been listening to a lot of 21 Pilots the past few days because while Ooh, we were painting the fireplace, the I put on a playlist on Spotify called Eminem Radio because <laughs> I wanted nice. to listen to Eminem. And there was a lot of, um, I mean, not a lot. There were a handful of 21 Pilot songs thrown into that playlist as well, which was just so fun. It was, it had a, a bunch of nostalgia. It was really good. But anyway, yeah, none of the songs awesome. I picked are 21 Pilots or Eminem for that matter. So. Damn. I'll start from the top. I wish that you had picked Love the Way You Lie <laughs> featuring Rihanna. <laughs> Ooh, what book would that be? About one thing about a toxic relationship, little, probably a Colleen Hoover book. <laughs> little Fires Everywhere? Mm, of the, yeah. Maybe, maybe. Anyway, that's that's not what we're that's not what we're here to do today. I so, guess that's why they call it window pane. <laughs> Ariel. <laughs> 
<laughs> Quit it, you're making me laugh too hard. Um, okay, so I decided to go with The Great Gatsby as my first book. Um, okay, cool. And this one was actually kind of hard to pick just one song because I actually have a little playlist that I've started. Oh. That's anytime I hear a song that reminds me of The Great Gatsby, I throw it into this playlist. Um, yeah. But the, the one I decided to go with is Dreamland by Glass Animals. which is oh, okay. off of their most recent album, Dreamland. And I picked this not spe not because of um, lyrics or anything. It's just the vibes. The vibes are yeah. so ethereal and dreamy mm. and just feels like beautiful and gorgeous. And that, that to me just like feels like the Great Gatsby, you know, the glitz yeah, and glamour yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And it's just such a good song. Every time I hear it, I'm just like, ah, oh, Gatsby. Um, but I also did want to yeah. give a shout out to one of the other songs on the playlist because I'm sure people will be yelling at me to mention this. I oh. don't listen to Taylor Swift, right? Not a Swifty. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm yes. just not. But the, I came across this song by Taylor Swift called Happiness, which I put into my okay. playlist because it's literally about the great Gatsby. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. Like, there's okay. like some of the lyrics are quotes from the book, which so I was like, cool. I just came across it somehow by accident, and I was like, what is this? <laughs> so I had to put it into the playlist, yeah. even though, and it's actually a pretty, it's a nice song. I don't hate the song or anything. Okay. I just wanted to what mention album that. Album is it? I think that's from? Evermore. I think. God, we're really revealing how we are not Swifties in this. Listen, world. I used to be really into Taylor Swift when she mm -hmm. had the long curly mm -hmm. hair when she was doing country the stuff. OG, yeah, the my OG friend Taylor, and I were yeah. into that. I was always trying to learn how to play those songs on the guitar. I did not know how to play ah! the guitar, so that was how much I was into Taylor Swift. Just so everyone knows, that's awesome. I had my moment. I love that. Um, but yeah, so that's we my... all have our moment. <laughs> exactly, I'm just went, over it. Now. I saw I saw Taylor Swift on the Reputation tour. Oh my gosh, I was I forgot about yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> We all had our moment. It was like a delirium hallucination type <laughs> thing where I was like, I bought this physical CD because yeah. I was in my old Jeep that didn't have oh. like new tech. And yeah. so I could only listen to music on CDs in that Jeep. Wow. It was like a nice. I had a car like that once. So, yeah. <laughs> it was and dark. so I literally bought Reputation because I was like, God, this album is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I like just listen to it all of the time and then i was like i am gonna go see her in toronto oh on the gosh. reputation tour uh that's so funny that just reminded me of another memory before you jump into the next yeah. one talk about having cds and cars i um mm. there was a time where i also could only play like whatever cds i had in the car yeah and two of the cds i had were like the soundtracks from the hunger games movies which i don't know if you've ever listened to those <laughs> But they are so random. Like they have gotten all these like big artists to write songs specifically for the Hunger Games, yeah. but they only were ever released like on CD. Like these songs aren't in the yeah. movies. <laughs> They're just like a special <sighs> album that's kind of like tells you the story of the Hunger Games through song, which is so that's weird. So but odd. I really like I listen to them a lot, so I know those songs pretty well. <laughs> Yellow Flicker B. Oh, that's Lord's a good one. Hunger Games. That song? one is so good. That's one of my favorites. That is such a good song yeah holy crap dang i should go back and listen um, to that again but anyway carry on <laughs> okay so my next book is lolita Ooh. so the first line of lolita <clears throat> pretty famous here mm -hmm. lolita light of my life fire of my loins <laughs> um so the song that i picked is off to the races by lana mm. del rey yep which has a chorus line that says light of my life fire of my loins be a good baby do what i want light of my life fire of my loins give me them gold coins give me them coins <laughs> it, <feels laughs> it sounds so, so weird hearing that just it spoken. sounds so weird when you don't <laughs> sing it <laughs> it sounds so much better when lana's singing it i swear <laughs> it really does um i love that song so what's really interesting is lana del rey has a song called lolita mm -hmm. And I didn't want to pick that one because it's, first of all, I was like, it's too obvious. Yeah. Um, but it also doesn't have quotes from the book in it. Like it says, hey, Lolita, hey, hey, Lolita, hey. Like it's got, it <laughs> says the name a lot of times, yeah. but it doesn't have the lyrics or the, the quotations. Mm -hmm. Whereas Off to the Races does. I also like Off to the Races more as a song. Yeah. I actually don't know if I've um, ever listened to Lolita, but I've listened to Off to the Races mm, about a thousand times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's um, a good one. I would also just say that Lolita, or sorry, 
um, Lana Del Rey overall has a real Lolita vibe. I was just thinking that. I'm like, she she just screams to Lolita. To the book. Yeah. Yeah. The whole book to, um, not the character, but the yeah. book's vibe. And Lana Del Rey's like 50s, 60s thing that she's always kind of mm-hmm. doing and her sultry singing and all of that is yeah. like that whole thing. Yeah, it just makes fits. a lot of sense. Yeah. It fits. Um, okay. What's your next one? Okay. My next one, I decided to go with know my name by chanel miller which oh. i don't that's like huh why did i pick that but i was just kind of listening to songs and then trying to think of what books they reminded me of and mm-hmm. um one song that i have had stuck in my head probably ever since i watched this movie that it's in um and i just had to match it up with something so i chose the song glide by mitski um it's like a mm. cover of I can't remember who the original artist is, but this is the version. It's from the movie After Yang. So that's how you can find it. And it's just like, I feel like this song is kind of like Chanel at the end of her memoir, where it's like things are looking up. It's very hopeful. It's very lovely. Like, I don't have the Mm. lyrics in front of me. I wasn't as smart as you, but I'm just here for the vibes for the most part. (laughs) Just listen to the song and um, you'll be able to feel what I feel. And (laughs) and then you'll, I think that can kind of, help you understand how the book makes me feel too it's just so like it's like a warm hug like that song is just so so lovely so that's what i picked for my second one okay my final one i chose 1984 by mr Mm. jorge orwell (laughs) and this book for me Basically, I have a really big obsession with George Orwell and Lord. Mm-hmm. I feel that Lord loves George Orwell yeah. and George Orwell would like Lord. <laughs> um, so I think I'm just going to go for the obvious choice. I'm going to yeah. go with Royals. Mm. Um, basically, what I'm arguing here is that Lord's music is all about... Well, no. No, I take that back. Lord's first album is all about um class struggle yeah and it's about like her being not upper class not fancy um the other song that i really like for this is like white teeth teens Mm. um but like the first line of royals is i've never seen a diamond in the flesh so it's like her life is so unglamorous so disconnected from like that kind of instagram thing that Mm -hmm. she's literally never seen a real diamond only photos of them um i'm not proud of my address Again, it's like the concept of being like, I'm from the wrong side of the track, mm-hmm. stuff like that, where it's just like, I'm not that what I'm supposed to be. And then the whole chorus, obviously, will never be rule, ro- royals and stuff. So the, all of that is, to me, very similar to 1984, Animal Farm, everything George Orwell writes, which is about class struggle. And it's about, like, the working class. And I made an entire video <laughs> yes. that I am going to link in the description <laughs> of back. this video. Um, because it's like... I wrote an essay about this in my undergrad because mm. I was like, I swear to God, there's a connection here. And then I made a video version of the essay yeah. where I was just like, I've got to share this idea because I was so excited about it. Um, so yeah, that's my third and final one. Well, that's great. You did a really good job with this game. You did Thanks, better buddy. than me, I think, which is fine. No. Um, I've pulled up the <laughs> lyrics for my final choice so that I can nice. look smarter. So, um, <laughs> so the last book I decided to pick was A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Oh. And while I was reading this book, I think I listened to The National quite a lot while reading the book. So it's partially connected in my mind that way. But I also okay. feel like The National, just in general, pretty much you pick any of their songs. They're quite sorrowful Mm. and like moody, uh, which I feel Mm -hmm. like fits that book. But I specifically picked two songs, but I'll just start with one here. So I've chosen Sorrow by The National. Cover me in rag and bone, sympathy. And the beginning of the song goes like this. Sorrow found me when I was young. Sorrow waited. Sorrow won. Sorrow, they put me on the pill. It's in my honey. It's in my milk. So Mm. very, ooh, I just got a little bit of a chill. Um, Just (laughs) hearing the song in my head. So this obviously a little life is just like a very sad, depressing book about someone who Mm. has been through hell like a million times over basically. And so he's very depressed and all that jazz. So this song just, you know, even just the titles like, yep, that makes a lot of sense. The other song... And I feel like more like this one is more the vibes 
fit a little life for some reason in my head. I don't think it's necessarily the lyrics, but Lemon World by The National. Mm. Mm. Every time I hear that song, I feel like I'm <laughs> I'm reading a little life. Like I'm just like inside of that book when I hear that song. So that's the other one I wanted to recommend. I don't think I've ever heard a song by The National. Oh. <laughs> you should listen to them. So they that are is why I'm them. not saying more things. I see. Because I'm like, I don't know who that is, but I'm, I want to check them you out. You should now. definitely check them out. Just like listen to some of their top songs because they are all yeah. so good. So, so good. Yeah. But yeah, moody. I really have... It was really funny going back to that emo playlist. Mm, bring it back. The emo <laughs> voice is really stuck in my head. Now. It's like such a particular like exactly high. Uh, it's like men singing high voices, kind of nasally a little bit. Nasally, yeah. There's a nasally thing. <laughs> I have the what is it? The Black Parade one. The when I was when I the was young boy. the young boy. I'm just like that is in my head right now, and I can't get away from it. That is so funny. <laughs> It's really funny. Um, Never thought you'd be here today <laughs> thinking no, about my chemical no, romance at no, the ripe age I really of 28 don't. or 27. <laughs> how old are we? <laughs> I re- how old am I? I'm 28. We're 28. Oh, God, I don't let's not about that. think about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely forget my age all the time. <laughs> I did the other day. I thought I was 27 and then I was 28 and I was like, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> we definitely won't forget Got next year. <laughs> yeah. oh boy okay well thank you so much everyone I, I had a lot of fun on this episode um this was a silly good time mm-hmm. so we are now going to go record our patreon mini podcast books on bucket which nope. is the wrong one. <laughs> i always want to say books on bucket even though that we've been doing our... movie tub for like a year <laughs> yeah that was our last mini podcast <laughs> we switched them up because we obviously like want to keep it a little fun and fresh for us yeah. uh no movie tub where we talk about the things we've been watching mm. um i got a really lovely message from a, a person who had signed up to our patreon oh. and they were like you know i think I believe the situation was that they got a job and now that they had a couple of months of money, like they were feeling a lot more stable mm-hmm. and they were like, I'm so excited to support. And there was three, it was us oh, and yeah, two other cool creators. Yeah. Um, and I was like, that is so beautiful. So I just wanted to do like an extra special shout out to everyone on our Patreon. It's so lovely. We, ha- we also got another message from someone who was like, it's time for my um twice a year check-in to books unbound so they just like sign up for one month and then they like listen to all of our stuff over the month because we release one of these every week yeah um and there's a bunch of other bonus content on there that we do vlogs every month and stuff like that and then they like quit at the end of the next month Mm -hmm. or whatever they do for a month and then in six months they'll do it again that's smart. And like that's all that's a yeah good technique. that's a great way to do it yeah. and that still really supports us so if you're cur- curious about checking it out uh yes it's patreon.com forward slash books unbound and it's always linked in the description in the show notes and our website and our instagram mm. as well okay that being said thanks so much you guys for listening and we'll talk to you all next week on episode 200 ah! bye, <laughs> bye. <laughs>